Hey, you're watching Over It, and in this episode, we are going to create an eSports mascot logo in Corel. So, this is the eSports mascot logo that we are going to create, and we're going to cover a few different features in Corel, and I believe you will enjoy it. So, for us to achieve this, the process we will use involves four stages namely, sketching, tracing, coloring, and shading. Because this process takes up time, we are going to skip the first stage which is sketching so that we can keep the tutorial shorter and focus more on the other three stages. But if you would like to see my sketching process, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video on that in the future. But for this video, feel free to use any mascot logo sketch that you might have or you can download the one that I'll be using in this episode using the link in the bio so you can follow along. Well, enough said, let's jump into Corel and get started with the second stage of the process and that is tracing. For this project, I'm going to be using an A5 document which is optional so once yours is ready, we can get started. For tracing, we're going to be using guidelines so we need to select our rulers. So let's go to view and then make sure that rulers are selected and we have our rulers here. The next thing is to go to snap to. And then make sure that snap to guidelines is selected and this allows us to snap all the objects that would create to those guidelines and once we have those ready we can go to window dockers and then object manager so remember that for this process of creating the mascot logo we're going to do everything in stages so for the remaining three stages which is tracing coloring and shading we're going to have those three stages in different layers by doing so it will make it easy for us to create the mascot logo and to manage everything so it means that we're going to have one layer for tracing, another layer for coloring, and then another layer for shading. So after creating a page in Corel, you have two different layers created for you for that page. As you can see, page one. So we have guides and layer one. So we're going to ignore guides and we can also minimize the master page. And I'm going to rename layer one to tracing. So you can name it anything you want. So all my tracing, I'll do it in this first layer. And then later I want to create another layer for coloring and then another layer for uh, shading. So once we have those ready, we can now import our sketch into Corel. So you can either use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control I, or you can simply go to File and then Import. Select your sketch and then import it into Corel. So I'll paste it here by just drawing a rectangle like that for the image. And then you have your image in Corel. Now I'll just try to center it on my document and maybe I can rescale it a bit to just make it a bit bigger just like that okay so this is my uh my sketch so when i was sketching this the guidelines that i created so if you did download this sketch you'll notice that there's a guideline that i created uh like in the middle of the art here so i'll use this as uh, my guideline so what i'll do is i'll take a ruler and then just uh put it directly on top of that one so as you can see, it's perfectly aligned with uh, my guideline. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but it's a bit faint, something like that. So I'll use that as my reference point. And again, there's another one that I created right here. So I can also create another guideline just like that. So if your lines are not perfectly aligned, you can try to maybe rotate the image, make sure that it's perfectly centered. And then from that, you can get started. So once you're happy with everything, what we're going to do is to lock this image so that when we're tracing, it doesn't move. So on our object manager here, I'll just right click on the image and then go to lock object, just like that. So now if you try to move it with the pick tool, it won't move anymore. And from that, we can get started. So for tracing, we're going to do it in parts. By that, I mean that we are going to draw everything in parts. So we're going to first, let's say, start by tracing out the horn here. And then we're going to trace out the frame here and we're just going to do half of it and then mirror it on the other side and then from that we'll cut out the features just to make the artwork pop out more so what we're going to do now is to start by tracing uh, the horn you can trace anything you want uh, to say so what i'm going to do is to select my pen tool just like that and i'm going to start about this point so when tracing, what I like to do is to, uh, to follow like the outside line here. So I'm going to put my first node right here and start tracing from there. So if you haven't, uh, if you're not familiar with the pen tool in Corel, there's a video that I made. Uh, so you can check that out. The link is in the description and you can learn uh, on how to use the pen tool in Corel and to make everything easy just in case I miss something in this video. 
So with our first node here, what we're going to do is place another one here and try to create a curve like that. Okay, that's perfect. And maybe I might want to just uh, reduce the outline to hairline to make it a little bit thinner as you can see. Okay, that's good. So once we have that, we can continue with our tracing. So one other tip for tracing, remember is, uh, you see we are, we'll be tracing with the pen tool using these nodes here. So the fewer the nodes that you have, the more smooth that the curve is. But don't worry about trying to get the curve as smooth as possible uh, the first time. You can always come back and fix it using the shape tool. So with that said, we can move on to the next step. So I'll just place my next node about at this point and then just try to draw this curve. Okay, that's perfect. And I'll move on to the other point. So this time I'll place it here and then just draw it like that. Okay, so I'm not going to drag my curve all the way out here because <laughs> I don't normally trust my sketching skills. So as you can see, it's way too much. So I want to bring it back just a little bit because I always make changes when I'm tracing because I think uh, I do a better job in Corel and a better judgment to say. So as you can see, it's too much off. So I don't want to go all the way out there. So I'm going to place it, I think, right about at that point. That's good. And I'm just using this uh, feature here to reference the distance between this line and this one. So I think this is much better than it was right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, as you can see the curve here, it's going all the way out here. I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is to uh, reset it by holding Alt on my keyboard and then click on this node. And then now we can draw a straight line again. I'll go at this point and then just create a small curve like that. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's not really smooth here. So we'll come back and fix it later. But for now, we don't have to worry about that. So I'll do the same thing, reset it here and just come at this point and then just draw a small curve like that. Okay. So inside here, we don't need to worry about anything. You can be as messy as you want. And then we can come back again to this point and just draw another curve like that. So the whole idea here is to try to get it as um, as smooth as possible, but don't worry about it too much. So we can come back and create another node at this point. And maybe I can bring it in a little bit like that. And just, just create this curve, something like that. Okay. So as you can see, this curve is not going in the direction that I want it to. So if I just place a node here, it won't uh, okay, it's looking good actually. Wow. <laughs> okay, so we just do that and let's see how it goes. So I'll just place my node here like that. Maybe I can bring it inside a little bit more because I think it's way off too much. Okay, but I don't like how it looks here. So we'll come back and fix it. And here again, um, it's too much, but let me just close it like that. Okay, so once you've created like the best shape, what you can come and do now is to select the shape tool and then start fixing uh, all the areas that are not uh, good enough. So I'll just click on this node here, for example, and just drag the curve inside a little bit more to uh, something like this. Okay, I think that's good. And I don't like the way it looks here. So I like how it looks here, but not the way it looks here. So what I'm going to do is put a node here so that I can maintain the curve at this point, but I can make changes here. So what I'm going to do is to highlight this node that I have here and then just delete it. As you can see, the curve is smoother now, which is something that we want. And maybe if you're not happy with this, you can always bring it in a little bit more and you can always adjust the curve till you have something that you like. So just invest more time into this and try to perfect your curves as much as possible. So again, here, I don't like the way it looks. Uh, I like that my curve gets to this point. So I'm going to put a node here so that I can maintain the structure here. But I want to make changes here. So I'll delete this node. And if the curve is not good for me, I can readjust it again using the nodes here. So, okay, that's looking good. And maybe I need to bring it out a little bit more on this side. And here it's not smooth enough. So let's see if I delete this. Okay, that's too looking good but I need to bring it inside a bit and maybe something like this okay so far so good so what I'm going to do lastly at this 
point i'm going to put another node here and uh just delete this one so it's mainly just trial and error so just give it a bit of time and then find something that works for you but eventually you get the curve looking the way you want it to and uh, i'll just do that maybe remove no i should have kept it because uh, i can put another one here to maintain it and then okay that's looking good for me and uh, on this one i'm happy with it but i'm not happy with this point so uh, what i'm going to do is i need to maintain this curve here so i'll add like an anchor node here now oh, i don't know if it's called an anchor node but that's what i call it and then just delete this one and as you can see it's smooth now so that's what you're trying to get so once we have something that looks like this you can move on to the next thing so once we have this ready we can instead of drawing this again we can mirror this to the other side but we'll do that later so i don't normally trust my sketching skills like i said so i normally just draw one side if i can mirror to the other side i'll do that so we can now move on to the other one so i always like to uh, start with the outline as you can see so at this point um, i'll just go and create my node right on the guideline like that that's why we had to go to snap to guidelines so you see if you move your pen to at this point it will snap to the guideline unlike if you didn't have that uh, if you try to move it nothing will happen but if you have uh, snap to guideline checked if you come at this point you can snap to it so that's what we want and we we'll just draw this curve like that and we'll just put another one maybe i can stretch it a bit more okay that's good enough okay bring it all the way down here and um okay maybe maybe i should undo that and zoom out a bit okay let's draw it again okay that's good so because we're going to join this part with the horn here we don't need to worry about anything here so I'm just going to put the next node here. Remember, we're tracing the outline first. So we'll go ahead and create another curve at this point. And um, we create, maybe that was too much. Okay, let me bring it out a little bit more. Okay, at this point. And then we can put another one here. We can now trace this. Maybe let me zoom in a bit, reset it. And just... Uh, draw another curve like that and I like the way it's going so I won't reset it and I'll just put another node here it's looking good so far put another node right here and uh, we can go all the way to this point so it's more like a curve at this point uh, then we just put another node there okay I went in too much let me reset it again just create another point like that and then just create the corner right there okay looking good I got it perfect that time and uh, we can just create another curve going all the way down there I'll zoom in a bit to see more clearly and create another node I think at this point and uh, just curve it all the way at this point so as you can see it curves like to the outside here okay good so now we are at the midpoint we can now reset it and just go all the way up and close our curve right there on top so as you can see um one thing i forgot to mention was uh when you create these curves you see that on your object manager we have those curves so this curve here was the curve for the for the horn here so as you can see it's named curve so you can rename it if you want to and again this curve was the care for uh, this shape that we created so if you fill this with black you can kind of get an idea of what we're trying to draw here so from those two curves this is what we have so what i'm going to do at this point is to first perfect the last curve that we created maybe we can rename this to uh, main for example so i'll try to just uh, perfect the curves at this point it's not looking as smooth as i would want to so i'll add a node here delete this one okay looking good and um yeah it's looking okay that's perfect it's just good and here i like how it looks okay i'm happy with how it looks there uh, maybe at this point i can bring it out a little bit more just a little bit more 
okay I like how it looks and uh, what I'm going to do is to add a node here and then just delete this one and you can see it's smooth now maybe I can rescale this okay okay that's good so I'm happy with how it looks so far so what we can do is as you can see this side and like the horn and the main frame that we created here it's almost identical to this side so we can copy this and then mirror to the other side so what we're going to do is to um let's just select everything or the two curves that we created and maybe we can weld them together for now to create one shape as you can see we now have one uh, object so what you have to do is to select them all and then go up here and select the option that says weld and i'm using my pick tool at the moment so i'll uh, weld them together to create one shape and what we're going to do with that shape is to copy it so Control c to copy Control v to paste or you can right click on it copy and then uh, right click and then paste again and i'll just mirror it to the other side so we mirror it horizontally like that and what we're going to do is to select this node here and then just drag it till we snap to the other node here at this point so as you can see the guideline that we created the ruler is more like our reference point so uh, both of them have snapped there so as you can see i was saying i don't trust my sketching skills this is way off so i would rather use this one now i'll select those two curves that we created and then we weld them again together just like that and after you weld things it's a good uh, uh, thing to always uh recheck uh like the main points here so as you can see it's not looking smooth here it kind of curves in and then outside we don't want that so we delete this node here and as you can see the curve is smooth now and the same thing we do it down here oh, it's looking good so we don't need to change anything okay so now we have that but as you can see this side here was meant to be different from the uh, from this side so what we're going to do is to readjust the curve here and then just move it to this point and i'm using the shape tool to do that and uh, we can just change the curve a bit more and what we want to do here is to delete the nodes between this node and this node so i'm going to highlight both of all of them then just delete everything and um, add a node here just drag it to this point that's what we want add another node here drag it to this point so i'm just trying to trace how it should have looked at this point and uh but i won't adjust here because it's way off here on my sketch so i'll just keep use these points as reference and i'd like to do the same thing at this point and um the same thing for this point and i think we can just cave it in a little bit more right here okay that's looking good for me so if it's not perfect you can always fix it again but i won't change anything here because i don't want to stretch it more it should be equal the side this side and this side okay so once we have that we can now move on to the next thing so this is our main frame so i'm just going to rename this to main just like that and now we can start to cut out the features for our musket logo so what we're going to do is select the uh, pen tool again and we're still working on the tracing layer so what i'm going to do now is to try and trace so this point here i'm going to cut it out and the way i'm going to do that is i'll start let's say about i think this is tools i think i'll start about this point okay and work from there and i'll create a curve just to try to trace that feature just like that and again just come to the outside like something like that so what we're trying to do here is to judge the distance between this line and this one let me change my outline of that line to hairline to make it thinner okay something like this so this is what we have at the moment so we can now just go with it again up to i think this point and just drag it out a little bit more okay i'm happy with that maybe it's too much let me put it here because i want to maintain the same distance between the line at the edge and uh, the one outside okay so we reset it here and what i'm going to do now is to uh, okay this was meant to be something like a curve here okay as you can see my sketch is not so good so we'll fix that later but anyway for now it's a good reference point and we can just again um 
create a curve here i meant to this was meant to be a curve like that so i'm going to do that manually here and just place it somewhere there okay and we can just go on so i'm trying to keep this distance here as much as possible and um we just place it somewhere about there and just continue to repeat the same process again so that's all about tracing i think i'll put it about that point and then just move it again to that point to close it okay so once we have that uh, the best structure that we want we can now start to readjust the curves so i think i have to increase it here a little bit more and uh I think I'll drag this guy inside a little bit more again. Then just adjust this curve. Um, so if you have good sketching skills, it will make it easy. Because uh, your lines should be perfect most of the time. And uh, we just readjust that. But for guys like me, we have to, you know, work extra harder. <laughs> so, okay, I'll just put another node here and delete this one because I'm not happy with the way it looks there and maybe I can stretch it out a little bit more not too much just a tad more okay that's looking good for me I guess okay and maybe I can bring this curve to about that point okay I like how it looks and maybe drag it in a little bit and uh, you continue to do the same thing and uh, until you are happy with uh, what you have and again do the same thing here and again this same thing here okay but we still need to do something else uh, okay my pen tool I need to cut out this part here so no need to worry about how it looks at this point just start here and then we can create this curve just like that okay so that's looking good so what we want to do is to cut out this part okay let me just give it a red color so we need to cut out this red cut this red part from the let's say the green one so as you can see we have our two curves here so we need to cut this uh curve from this one so what we do is we select both of them and we're going to use this option that says back minus front. So we are cutting out the one that's on top from the one that's uh, at the bottom. So we do that and then we have something like this. And that's exactly what we want. So I'll remove the fill for now and then just keep it like this. And then we can move on to the next thing. So why are we uh, tracing out like what are we going to do with these uh, features that we just traced out? We're going to do the same exact thing that we just did. So you see, this is the curve that we have or the feature that we just traced here. So let me just give it a green color and the main frame, I'll just give it, let's say a red color. So what we want to do again is to cut out this green part from the red uh, part. So what we're going to do is to select both of them and then just go again and use back minus front, just like that. And we have something that's, that looks like this. So maybe a bit color is better. So as you can see, uh, this is what we want, and the color will like the the color layer will be below the tracing layer, so that we can see the color through this uh, part here that is open, and that's exactly what we want. So we need to do that for all the features that we have for our mascot logo. So for now, I'll remove the fill. I think it's better to do that, and we can trace out everything else. So what we're going to do is to do the same thing for this point, and then just drag it in like that okay let me change that to hairline okay that's looking good and at this point I'll just drag it to about let's say this point let's create a curve like that reset it and bring it inside to about this point curve and um, just create a simple curve right here okay so once we trace a feature you can select the main frame from that back minus front and when you fill the main frame you see that this uh, part here has been cut out just like that so that's what we're trying to do for everything else 
So lastly, I'll just show you how to do this part. So we we'll start with uh, our point here, start tracing like that. And I think I'll go like all the way to the top at this point. I don't like, I don't like the distance between this line and that line. I think it's too much. So I'll just put it there and um, just come and try to redraw it at about that point. Okay, that's good for me. And um, we just come to this point, then just create another curve like that. And um, this time I'll just draw another curve directly like that. And just come back here like that okay let me zoom in a bit and uh, I'll just draw another curve right about this point uh, maybe that was too much so let me just do this and we can create a curve here and just put a node there another node at about that point and another node there and we can drag it all the way inside like that and then just create another curve at this point. okay that's not how it meant to be so I'll just do this all right and um, just trace it out okay I jump one thing Okay, I need to put a node here, but it's a bit flat here before it starts to curve. So uh, I think I'll just reset this point for a minute and then just add another one here. So as you can see, we have these cutouts here, but I don't want that to do that now because uh, I'm going to draw half of this frame and then mirror to the other side. So as you can see on this other side, we don't have cutouts, so we can easily put the cutouts later on here. So what I'm going to do is to just go with it, go with the flow, then just click here, click here, and again, skip that cutout, and just draw the curve like that. Reset it, bring it back, I think to about that point. And here it's a curve, curving inside of it, and then outside, so just reset it. Then it goes on outside, like that, and then snap it to the edge like that. So go all the way up, snap it there again. And select the shape tool, come back and fix all the curves again. Okay, that's looking good. Um, okay, maybe I can readjust the curve here. Okay, looking good for me. Delete this one. Maybe not that one. Okay, just like that bring it in a little bit more okay that's looking good for me um, I like the way it looks mm, okay we can delete that one and also remove that one I don't like it maybe I can drag this one out a little bit more so if I did that for this one I'm going to have to do this exact same thing for this one and uh, readjust the curve okay it's smooth enough for me okay that's that's looking good so once you're happy with how it looks uh, what we're going to do now is to copy this curve that we just created and then paste it uh, mirror it again horizontally move it till it snaps I'm using the nose point as the reference here and select both of them and then we're going to weld them together and then we have one shape that's complete so we just check the main nodes for our frame everything is looking good so uh, again I need to cut out this part right here and then adjust here because it's not that's not how it was meant to be so select my pen tool who we'll start from this point just click outside this frame that we're trying to cut out from now uh, just maybe click at the edge here and just create this curve just like that and then just cut it out 
like that okay so what we're trying to do is to cut out this shape that we just created from the main one uh, not the main one but uh, this curve that we just created like um, let me fill it with black so we're trying to cut this shape from the black one so we just select both of them and then back minus front again and then we have something like this and it's always a good idea to check your curves after doing that because they might not be smooth so again I'll just remove that one and it's looking good for me and we do the same thing right here click outside and then just um, create a curve like that and then like that that okay then we repeat the same process and then we have something like this so this is the process for tracing uh, so once you have that you can now select the main frame and then back minus front we fill that with black and then you can start to see that this is what we're trying to get from our sketch so we keep repeating the same process until we have completed it so i'm going to cut out this part right here and trace everything else so i'll just do that quickly and be right back once i've uh, finished tracing everything so you can watch guys please enjoy Tracing is complete and now we can move on to the third stage of our process which is coloring and the first thing that we're going to do is to unlock our sketch because we don't need it anymore and we can now go ahead and delete it so right click and delete and now what we have is our tracing layer so we're going to create a new layer for coloring so let's go to an object manager down here you find the first icon that says new layer and you can just click on it to create a new layer I'll just name mine color you can name it anything you prefer it's optional and what we want to have is the color layer below the tracing layer so i'll just drag my tracing layer on top of the color layer just like that so what we want to do is that the color that we add on the color layer we should be able to see through our cutouts here so there are two ways you can do that so i'll just show you quickly the first one is uh, let me just remove the fill from our tracing so that we can see everything clearly so i'll just remove the fill but keep the outline and what I'll do is lock the layer uh, for tracing using this lock key here and let me just minimize it select my color layer and now we can start to add color so let's say that we want to add a red color to this part of the horn here so to do that the first way you can use the pen tool and what you want to do is to create a shape that covers that area you want to fill with color but within the boundaries of our tracing so you don't want to go outside or too much inside the area that you want to uh, fill with color so I'll just click here to start drawing a shape around the area that I want to fill with color you don't need to be accurate with this uh, step here because everything else won't be visible except the color on this cutout here so I'll just go ahead and do that real quick and um, just draw that quickly so 
after drawing that shape, you can see the curve that we drew is in the color layer. Now we can fill that with red, for example. And what happens now is if we unlock our tracing layer and fill the main tracing with a color, let's say black, as you can see, this is the result that we get. And that's exactly what we are after. So we can only see the red color through the cutout. And as you can see, it's looking perfect. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, uh, the one that I prefer, is to use the Smart Fill tool. So let's select the Smart Fill tool and let's make sure that the outline is at least on 10. By default, I think it will be one pixel. So the reason with that is if it's on one pixel, you fill a color. For example, we want to fill this area. We fill, uh, sorry, let me select the color layer first. We want to fill the color here. What happens is that uh, we have an outline of one pixel around, but what we want to do is to make sure that this outline here bleeds, uh, like pass through the cutout line that we have on our tracing layer. So let me unlock the tracing layer for a second, change the outline to let's say blue. We want to make sure that this color that we have bleeds pass through this blue uh, line that we have here. So to do that, we need to increase the outline of our fill tool. So for example, let me delete this and select the color layer again, smart fill tool, and we can increase it to 10. And if you fill with the color now, you can see that the outline bleeds through or pass through the line that we have for our cutout. And that's exactly what we want. And now that we have that, if you fill it with red, you'll notice that the outline won't change. So what we're going to do is to convert the outline to an object. So to do that, you can go to object and then convert outline to object, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, which is control shift plus Q after selecting the curve. I'll just do this. And you notice that on the color layer, we now have two objects. So the first one is the field that we had originally, and this one is the object created from the outline. So what we want to do is to merge both of them. So we select them and then weld them together and we just have one object and you can see it bleeds perfectly pass through that cutout line. So that's exactly what we want. So those are the two ways you could use and feel free to use the one that you're most comfortable with. So I'll just use the Smart Fill tool cause I feel like it's faster and uh, to save time, I'll just minimize the tracing. So for now, we'll just keep our tracing. Uh, maybe you can fill it, let me unlock it. We can just fill it with black, that's looking good. And then we can lock it now and we can select our color layer let's minimize tracing just like that and what we're going to do is i'm going to fill this part of the horn here with this color which is uh bf 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 so to fill it with that you can just select the curve there and then open the fill tools to edit it and um, select rgb on the hex code here just enter bf 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 and then you get this color that i'm using but feel free to use any colors that you would like and I'll do the same thing for this part. And this part here needs to be red. But what I'm going to do is this part and this part will share the same color. So I'll just fill this with a color, for example, uh, this color here. And I'll fill again this section with another color like that. And what I'm going to do is I now have two curves created, one for this part and another one for that. Because they share the same color, I'm just going to match them together to create one object and create, uh, go to object, convert outline to object, and then again, combine to match everything together to have a shape like this. And now we can fill them with the color. So for that one, I'm going to have to use a fountain fill because I want a lighter red in the middle here. So what I'm going to do is to go to fountain fill and this color here, I'm just going to add a red and this is the red that I'll be using. And the color code for that is uh, B30300. So you can just enter B hash B30300. And then you get this color. And I'll do the same thing for this part. And I'll just copy this color. And I'll add another point right in the middle at 50%. So you can enter 50% here. But what I want to do is to have this as a lighter red. Something that, something like that. Okay, that's good. So I don't know if you can see it on video, but uh, it's looking good at the moment. And that's how I'm going to fill that. So all the 
like all the areas that you know uh, that they share one color you can just uh, like fill in the, the positions and then just match them all together so that you can have one object for that so I'll select my smart fill tool again do the same thing for the eyes I know the eyes are supposed to be yellow and my beard here is supposed to be yellow and again this uh, part here is supposed to be yellow so as you can see I have three curves created for that actually four to say uh, for the eyes the beard and that I'll make those into one shape select my pick tool weld them together convert outline to object and then weld again the out uh, the outline object and the initial object that we had and we're going to fill this with yellow and the color for that is f6c028 so it's f6c028 so I'll just do that so you can open up your fill uh, two here and then just enter this uh, hex code f6c028 click ok so the same thing for the skin here I know that the skin has to be one color to say so create the objects using the smart fill tool weld them together outline to object just like that and then we can weld them back together so you can always rename them uh, just uh, if it's a bit confusing so that you know which is which and so you can for example right click on this and just rename it to skin so that you know this is the skin color and for this one I'm using this pink color which is D1A597 so it's hash D1A597 so I'll just do that and for my teeth here I'm going to fill this with white again I'll just repeat the same process and we can match or weld those together and make sure that it's in white and here it needs to be red and here as well so I'll just select my smart fill tool add color here 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 and here and here and we can weld them together object outline to object I can repeat the same process and just fill that with red and on this side because I want the I want this side to be much lighter than this side uh, on this part here I'm going to add uh, to uh, like a darker gray to say so I'll fill in just like that work them together and the color that I'll use for this it's um, hash three 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 so it's hash three 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 so you can use that or you can find another color that you prefer and I'll just repeat the same process and at this part right here I'll use a different shade of red so I'll use this one and the color code for that it's 730200 730200 and just convert that to outline again weld them together and then we have something like that so as you can see now uh, that's how you can add color and our mascot is looking really good but to make it pop now we need to apply some shading effects so let's get started with shading We're going to have to create a new layer for shading so first thing I want to do is to minimize my color layer and lock it and create a new layer and I'll just name this shading you can name it anything you like it's optional and what we want to do is to move this shading layer in between the tracing layer and the color layer and once we do that we're going to have the shading layer selected as you can see it's in red and I'll now select my pen tool just like that so what you want to do is to choose a point where you're going to have your light to say it's really optional so what I did for this mascot is to say my light point starts here and or my reference point my light will be here and it will be shining maybe in this direction or something like this so it means that the parts here are going to be lighter and for example on the horn here it's going to be darker here because maybe it's covered with the area on top and this side is going to be lighter than this side so it's just optional so you can just use a reference point for your light and from that you can uh, make all the shading decisions so for this one what I'm going to do is select my pen tool and uh, again within the boundaries of the tracing layer I'm going to click anywhere and then just start creating my path so what I want to do is to go to the node here and just create a curve 
like that I don't want it to be too much something like that and then join it with this knot here and then just curve it inward like that and come all the way down here so uh, again if if you cannot see what you're doing uh, here just make sure you turn off the fill on the tracing layer so that you can see everything clearly but uh, as for me I have an idea of where I'm going so the way we started off you find this node with a, like this white dot so I'll just click here to connect and then we have our object created here in the shading one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to since this is a, a, like a shadow I'm going to um, fill that with black select my transparency tool go to uniform fill and I'll set that to overlay and I'll adjust the opacity I think I'll just give it 30 opacity and then you have something like this so that's how you do that so make sure that your shape again is within the tracing boundaries and you can just adjust the transparency to get something that you like so the blending mode I use for this is overlay so if it's not perfect again you can always readjust the curve if you're not happy with it but uh, it's looking good for me so I'll just move on to the next part so again for here if you cannot see it clearly all you have to do is to unlock the tracing and for uh, a while remove the fill but always keep the outline so that you can see where you're drawing and select the pen tool again and at this point I want to create a shadow at this point which comes in like that and uh, you can be creative with your shadows to say and uh, I want it to end at that point and I'll come all the way down here and what I'm going to do again is fit it with black and change the transparency again and the blending mode let's go with overlay and uh, I'll just set it to 30 again so you can adjust the settings to find something that works best for you another thing is okay let me just show you in a second okay let me put back my fill or my tracing there just lock it minimize it select the shading uh, layer uh, another thing you can do is once you have created uh, an object with like for example transparency properties you can always copy them to another object that you'd have created so for example let's say that we want to create a shade at this point so I'll start by drawing the object first so I want it to be like this and then we can just change it curve and something like this remember to always invest time into perfecting your lines and um, okay I'll just bring it to about this point okay and then just go ahead it and then end there and reconnect it there now fill that with black and uh, maybe before I do that let me just just adjust my curves or something like that okay looking much better oh no I want it to be like this okay so I'll fill that with black select my transparency tool but instead of uh, and like uh, selecting the options that I want for this I can just use this option which is copy transparency select it and then just point it to the object that has the properties that you want to copy for example this one so if I click on that as you can see it copies the properties to that so it will just make it uh, faster for you when doing this and you can always readjust it if you're not happy with it again and uh, maybe you can move this curve right there okay that's looking good so far and what I want to do is to copy this curve to the other side so just copy it just like we've been doing with uh, everything else so I'll just move it till it snaps like that but I don't want it to like we don't have this cut out here so I'll just edit this I'll just drag this point to that point and drag this one inside add another point to about that then convert this line to a curve 
Okay, something like this. So that's the idea. And that's what I'm going to do for that point. And we need to add our shadows at every other point that we find fit. Now I just need to add some light and like here for highlights to say. And um, to just create a curve like this. And then just go with it up to about I think this point is good okay it's not it's not as smooth as I would love it to be so I'll come back and fix it but that's a good start and uh, I'll just curve it in what like that and then bring it all the way down here and then go up then within the tracing boundaries I'll just go ahead and close it where I nope that's not the one where did I start off? Okay, right there. So fill that with white. Remove the outline. And uh, what I want to do is to add a point here. Remove this one. And just readjust uh, the way this curves in and out. Okay, looking good. Okay, for this one, I won't change uh, the blending mode. I'll just leave it like that. And I'll do the same thing for this part. So I want to start about there. Just add kind of like that. And then just let it curve in like that. Okay. And remove the outline and then just keep it like that. But I like how it looks here, so I'm just going to copy it on the other side. I know the light and everything, but it looks kind of cool. <laughs> so I'll just mirror it to the other side and then just um, drag it using this node till it snaps to the other shape. Just like that, looking good. Okay, so I'm going to add shadows on this side. So I'm going to start at that point, click this node and um, just going to add a shadow thing to about that point. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe we can just copy that. Yes, I think we should do that. Let's copy this object. Control C, Control V. Mirror it on the other side and then just drag it. Let's just put it here. Okay. But what we're going to do that is let's just make it black. Uh, for now, let's leave it like this. So that we can see what's going on and we're going to adjust it a bit so i'm going to start by clicking here inside then just create another curve going all the way i think to about this point uh, maybe inside a little bit more so i'm going to create a curve like that so we're going to join this shape we're creating right now and this one that we just copied and we can just create another curve like that and then bring it inside a little bit more and at about that point we can just create a curve like that and I want this shadow to cover everything except for the eye so I'll just go around the eye and uh, go all the way around just like that And then just close it here. So what we're going to do is to select the object that we just created and this one, the one we copied, match them together to have something like this. But this time we'll fill it with black. And after we do that, we are going to um, copy the properties. So select the transparency and copy properties. We can copy properties of this object. And then we have something that looks like this. And it's looking really, really nice. And we can just repeat the same process for everything else. So start here at this point. I'll go in to about that point and then just curve in like that. And uh, I think I'll reset it and to about that point. Okay. I'm not too happy with how it looks, but it's okay. And again, our guideline is our reference point, just like that. I think I need to bring it out a bit at this point, drag it 
like that. And okay, that's looking good for me. All right, and we'll fill that with black to say, and um, copy the properties from this one. Okay, I think I need to readjust that. Let me increase the opacity to about actually it's at zero so it's blending mode it's a uh, multiply or maybe i'll set this to normal and just increase increase the just reduce the opacity like that okay that's looking good so it's 77 the blending mode it's normal so i'll just copy this one paste it and then just copy to the other side and drag it like that and we can match these two layers into one. So we now have this one. And uh, we can just rename this to nose or something like that. Uh, okay, that's looking good. And uh, we can move on to the next part. So I'm going to have to add uh, a shadow right here. So another thing you can do to save time, you can just create the object for your shadows in one go and then just edit them at once after you match them together so we can do this this point then just close it like that so i'll keep it like that for maybe make it white so that we can see it clearly and um we're just going to add another one let me just say right about that point just carving in like that all the way up here and fill that with white so that we remember and uh, we're going to add for the chin here the knot and just create a shadow going to about this point reset it and then just create another one about that point bring it to this area And then we can just fill it white. Okay, so those are the three objects that we just created for the skin. I'll just mesh them together and fill them with black and change the blending mode to let's just copy the properties of this one. Let's see how it looks. It's too strong, so we can increase that. And um, it's looking good now. Maybe we can set it at 73 to say. Oh, maybe send five so just find oh not five seventy five just find something that looks good okay that's okay with me and now we can do the same thing for our beard here so just start by drawing everything nicely okay set it Come to about this point, and we're going to reset that Kevin a little bit more. Okay, and um, something like that. Okay, I'm happy with that, and um, just go around to make sure that I don't get in the way of anything. Set that to black. I'm just going to copy the properties from this guy. Oh, that's too much. It's looking good. I'll just leave it like at maybe 60. Well, that's too much for maybe 55. Let's see how it looks. Okay, good. So I'll just keep it like that. And again, you can just add, I'm just going to add a shadow like at on the teeth here so it will start right about that point just go all the way down there and here you just curve outside like that close it here and at this time i'm going to copy the properties from these layers that i created here on the node okay that's looking good maybe i can set it to 60. not too much is it looking good for you guys? I don't know. Uh, maybe we can go with 70. 
okay so you can always adjust this and find something that works best for you but for now I'll just leave it like that just to save time and um, we can now put shadows for everything else so uh, on the cloth here uh, I'll need a shadow at this point just like that oops reset it just like that I'll just fill it with white at the moment to remember it because I'm just going to join them in one call and uh, I'm going to add another shadow right about there and uh, I need to pass through this point okay fill it with white temporarily and uh, we can come and adjust that maybe we should just do it now okay perfect and um we can add again another shadow right here And again, we can add, um, I think, another one right here. Okay, uh, let's fill the last two with white so that we remember what we are trying to do. And again, I'll just do the same thing for this point. Fill it with white so that we can come back to it later. And I'd like to do the same thing for this point, but I'm going to start right there to this point, curve in like that, then curve out like that, and then go all the way up right here. And I have my shadow curve in like that, that point, and then just end it right there. Let me come back to close it. Oh, sorry. Let's fill that with white so that we can remember. And um, we also need to fill this part or to give it a shadow. Okay, so I'm just going with the flow of the shapes here. So. I actually think the coloring process is the fastest one. The tracing and uh, the shading part, you have to be a bit patient with it. And uh, Oopsie, let's just keep it like that. Okay, let me add a node here, just anchor that curve. White, keep the outline black. I'm going to come back to it and um, last two, last two. We are almost there. And uh, just let me start at that point. And then we can just do this. Edit about that. Okay. Perfect. Not perfect, but we can come and fix it. Okay, let's fill it with white temporarily and um, let's fix that curve. It's not looking good. Not so good at all. Remove that, Just drag it in, drag it down a bit, sorry, drag it in a little bit more, and uh, I don't think it's smooth enough there, okay, that's good, and then finally, oh, not finally, we still have one part left, okay, let's go to the node, 
Okay, draw it carefully like that. Oh, this was an easy one. And uh, just go again around within our tracing boundary. And uh, just come all the way here. Let's fill that with white so that we remember. Okay, so we now have our objects created. We just highlight them, hold them together, fill that with black, change the transparency, copy properties from, let's say this one, and voila, it's looking good. Maybe I can adjust it to 40, something like that. So if the curves are not perfect, you can go ahead and fix them. And then the last part, which is um, this part down here, I'm just going to give it like small curve right here. And it's going to have the light on the left side. So fill that with black and then copy properties from these guys. Okay, it's looking good. So, yep, as you can see, our, our mascot is looking good. It just come to life after shading and that's it for now. Now that we have finished the shading process, we're going to finalize our mascot logo. But to do that, we need to add an outline on our mascot logo. So I'm going to minimize my color layer, lock it, also lock the shading layer and select the tracing layer and select the mainframe. So with the mainframe selected, we are going to bring out our outline options. So we'll go down here on the outline options, double click on it and you have this menu. The color that we're going to use, let's first of all set the width, let's say 25. The color that we're going to use is the red color, which is B30300. So it's B30300. You can enter it here. Or you can use any color that you prefer and make sure that behind view is selected and then click OK. So what that does, it gives us this outline as you can see right here. Maybe we can increase that to 35. So just find the one that you prefer and go with that one. And after we've done that, we are going to break uh, the outline, uh, the, like convert the outline to an object from our mainframe. So let's go to object and then convert outline to object. After we do that, we're going to create a new layer and I'm going to name this layer outline. You can name it anything you like. And after I've created a layer, I'm going to move this curve into that outline layer. And after I've done that, I'll move the outline layer below the other layers. And once you do that, you will see you have this nice outline effect on your mascot logo. So at this point, you might want to keep your mascot logo like this, or some people prefer having a name on it, or some people prefer having both. So at this point, I really advise to back up everything or to make a copy of the initial logo that you have before you add the name. So to do that with all layers unlocked, let's press Ctrl A on our keyboard, or you can highlight everything. Control C to copy. Let's create a new page here and then let's paste it. If you look at our object manager now, you see that we have page two created. So we can just minimize that and we can keep our copy of the mask and go back to page one. So on the first page here, what we're going to do now is um, let's delete the outline that we created and but still keep the outline there and let's lock the color and the shading layers. Go back to tracing again and select the mainframe. But what we're going to do now is to let's first of all scale everything down. Let's unlock them and then just scale every oopsie. Let's just scale everything down a little bit more. Okay, that's good. And now we can lock them again. So we can lock the shading and color layers. And at this point now, what we want to do is to select our text tool and we can write the name of our team. So I just call this one Bellator, which is a Latin word for warrior, but you can name it anything you like. And after you do that, we are going to use this font, long shot. I think it's a really good font for an eSports mascot logo, but you can use any font that you like and you can also name it anything you like. And what I'm going to do now is to increase the size a little bit. And I need to increase the space between the characters. So I'll select my shape tool. And there's this option here, which is going to click on it and then just drag a little bit outside. Okay, that's good. And what I'm going to do now is to go to object and then break artistic text so that you see that when you do that, we have each character on its own. And that's what we want. We highlight everything again. 
like the text, go to object and then convert to curves. At this point, we're going to select our rectangle and then create a small rectangle because uh, to my name here, I want to add like, like uh, triangles at the corner of B and the corner of R. So I'll just create a small rectangle, select the shape tool, convert it to curves by using this option here. And we're going to delete this node here. And we have this nice rectangle here. I'll just place it here till it snaps to B. And because we need another copy of it for R, we just copy it and paste it and then mirror it for the other side. Now we can match these two, B and this one, weld them together. Then move this one to R, select them all again, and then weld them together. After we've done that, we can select again the title or the curves that we have, and then just weld them together again to create one curve, just like that. And I'll just rename this to title, or you can name it anything you prefer. After we've done that, we are going to create a guideline directly at the middle of our um, mascot. We're going to use that as the reference point. Now I'll move the name and this space because I actually left it initially for the name. So I'll just change the color to uh, yellow and increase the size a little bit more. So at this point, what I want to do is to make sure that this uh, name here curves inward a bit at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is to select the envelope tool. In, where you normally find the drop shadow tool, you can open the menu and then select envelope tool. And once you have the envelope tool, we are going to delete this node that we have here. So just double click on it to delete it. And then we are going to drag this curve uh, along that guideline that we created and just curve it in a little bit about this point. And I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to select my pick tool and with shift press down on the keyboard, I'm going to select this point here and then just drag it in on a little bit more. So that's the effect that I'm after. Okay. And I think I'll increase the size to about that point. Okay. That's good. So at this point now we need to add an outline that we can match with our main frame so that we have like uh, the outline tracing the name that we just created. So with the curve selected for our title, we're going to go to this point here to add outline to it. So let's go with 25. And once you do that, let's go down here to open the outline options. And let's make sure that behind fill it's selected and then just click OK. Okay, I think it's good, but we are trying to have, you see like the distance between this edge and this edge. That's what we're trying to aim for just to be consistent. So maybe we can increase that to 35. Okay, that's, I think that's good. We can work with that. So I'm happy with that. We can leave it there. But if you feel like you should increase it, you can go ahead and increase the outline. So now at this point, let's uh, convert the outline to an object. And then now we now have uh, a curve for that. And let me just give it an outline of green so that it's visible so that you can see here. So what we want to do now is to, uh, for example, I don't want this cloth here to be visible. So I need to cover up that space. And uh, there's nothing else I need to change on this side. So if you have like openings here, you can also close them by either deleting the nodes, for example, if you want to remove this part, maybe it was white here. You can just highlight everything and then delete. Or you can use the pen tool to just create a shape that covers everything and then match it with the outline that you just created. And for this one, I'm just going to use my uh, shape tool, select the outline here. And I'm going to delete these nodes here and then change this curve here to a line. So you can see to cover that cloth, that's what I wanted. And everything else is looking fine. All right, so we don't need to worry about anything else. Okay, so after doing that, I'm going to remove that outline from that shape that we created. Select the curve or the outline that we created and the main frame, and then we're going to weld them together. So now if, for example, you move the frame on the side, you can see that we have it uh, meshed with everything else. 
So what I'm going to do now is to select the title. I'll just use Control X to cut it. Just Control X to cut it, and then select my shape tool. And I would just like to remove these nodes here, like to close these gaps. So I'll just delete them like that, and then just do the same here, and then the same here, and then Control V to paste. I'll just place it back where it was, and uh, that's looking good at the moment. And the last thing that we need to do now is to add uh, not the last thing but we still have one thing missing i meant to say palado team there so that's the full title so it should be palado team i'll change it to this and change the font to lato semi bold again if you need this font the link is in the bio so you can download it and um which is go ahead and increase the size also the link for long shot the font that i use here is in the bio so you can download it um I hope I say that before. And let's just increase the size of team to about that size. Okay, I'm happy with that. So we can keep it like that. Now what we want to do is to add outline to our main frame. So what we're going to do now is select the frame and uh, let's open the outline options here. And um I'm going to set it to 25 select the outline to be this red that we used before which is b30 300 and um, we're going to make sure that behind view is selected click ok and then we have something like this which is what we want maybe we can set it to 35 say and now let's convert it to object again so once you do that uh, let's convert the outline to object so once you do that we now have a curve uh, here created for us but look what happened here so we don't want that and we can fix that by as you can see uh, okay let's just be creative here we can use the freehand tool and select this edge go down like that and I'll just use uh, now select my shape tool delete these nodes here and convert this to line uh, maybe I was supposed to add a node here first before converting this part to line. Okay, and let's bring it back in. Just like that. Okay, so if you have some, like if you find some weird things happening, you can just fix them like that. Alright, that's good. And now that we have our curve, we can now move it into the outline layer. Just like that. And when you do that, you notice that you have the outline below everything. So I'll just minimize this, lock the outline, and this will be our mascot. Now we can just change maybe the background color. So I'll go to layout and then page background. Use a solid maybe black. And uh, this is our mascot logo. So as you can see, it's looking really nice and it's really, really nice. I like it. So that's the process guys so that's how you create a mascot logo in Corel using those four stages so first of all you have to sketch it and you can trace it color it and then add shading and then you can finally add the name or the outline to finalize everything so thank you guys for watching I know this has been a long tutorial but don't forget to subscribe like share the video and I'll catch you in the next video